So yesterday, Josh and I came here and we were trying to share Jesus with people. As we were leaving, I met our boy Atrophy. Atrophy is from out of town. He's performing with a rapper by the name of Lil Xan. Atrophy said he was down to meet up with us and talk about faith because he's not someone that particularly follows Christianity, but he's curious and he's going to talk about his stories. So we're going to have a, a great opportunity to talk to him. He's super kind, super humble. I'm super stoked to talk to him about Jesus. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe he'll be interested to giving Jesus a try. So we'll see. I know we were talking a little bit yesterday. You grew up in the South. What do, what exactly, do you believe in a God? Do you believe in higher power? Like what exactly do you believe in? I don't portray the most religious person. However, I do feel that faith uh, creates stability. It creates structure, it creates some obligations, and helps you prioritize things in your life. You know? So I do feel that's important. Uh, I did attend churches uh, different times. You know, I went to Southern Baptist office, you know, did the whole Easter egg thing. Um, but again, you know, uh, family, you know, family uh, and then in your environment, your products of. So my family didn't believe really that was an important value to have, um, at least in my upbringing at a younger age. My brother was a different story. So what do you think personally happens when you die? Like when, when this time, lifetime's over, what do you think happens? My belief, my whole heart, uh, energy is dispersed in different ways, right? Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily you're going to be um, featured on, you know, paranormal files or, you know, the Ghost Adventures or something like that. But I would say um, when you return to the state of no longer existing body, in yeah. body form, physically, I do believe that your energy is dispersed in different ways, whether it's people that, it, that, that you've crossed. Um, because brain waves are stimulated by thought and emotion. So I feel like realistically, those people we all captivate and embody, uh, you know, people that we cross, whether it's your grandparents, uh, your mother, your dad, hell, your sponsor, you know, or yeah. maybe the guy that you were sitting with in the Waffle House. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I've been that guy that, that you know, you have been that. Yeah. I've been that, you know. So I really, I really believe that when we go, we go peaceful. You know, sometimes it's a struggle. It may be painful. I do believe that your energy is dispersed in a way that it's going to make a difference. Go back a second into your story. I mean, yesterday you opened up to us. You've been clean from drugs from how long? Close to five years. Now. Close to five years. So can you get kind of give us access into before you went on that journey to getting sober, right? What what was like the what was your reasoning into like to go into drugs? You know, like some people want to numb a feeling. Some people are hurt. Some people just do it because they think it's fun. Like what? Well, dude. Uh, I, I was actually, uh, I was in, in, um, I was actually pimped out, like, like uh, I actually got caught in that, uh, in that thing, and I can say that, like, with the most sincerity possible, like, I've been uh, working where I've danced at clubs, where I got that attention that I'd never had before, and got a false sense of security, and was left outside after being gang raped, and it was filmed on my phone. Wow. It was, this, was, this was on my phone and then later shared after my phone was you know, stolen from there. Uh, Google is tied to that. So what happens is when, when you get a pissed off ex, yeah. they shared that material with a lot of people in my family, like friends, and then blasted it. And like That's something that I had to relive after being hit with GHB. So after that, it was like, oh, dude. And then that was just like a, a little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that went on for years. You know, my parents neglected me to the point where I didn't do the uh, potty training thing. So I would go to the bathroom and I would like cross my legs. It created compaction. My my intestines were starting to split. I would go to school and get picked on the shit beat out of me, man. Uh, because I was carrying uh, carrying wipes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, like I'd be like the only kid carrying wipes in there. And they're like, ah, like I can't, I don't understand why, you know, things are happening now. Later on, I discovered, uh, intravenous drugs, I was slamming anything and everything, crack, cocaine, uh, heroin, fentanyl, Dilaudids, in a, in a car for almost a year before I realized that what started me doing that was a child of mine that was killed in a hit and run. I'm riding with an ex of mine. There's a spoon in, uh, in my car CD player. And we're riding around, she's cooking, you know, peels in my, in my seat. And at this point, I'm not doing drugs. Yeah. Like, I'm smoking weed and I'm tattooing. But I get a phone call while she's cooking, and it's about, you know, my little boy, uh, 
being killed. And, and, uh, sorry, man. No, you're good. You're good. Then, uh, you know, that's it. Like, I never want to feel nothing, bro. And, uh, so I started going. I told her, I was like, yo, my little boy just got, got hit. And, uh, you know, uh, I told her to hit me, bro. Uh, she didn't want to do it. We argued. From that day on, man, I almost like didn't even like, go to me. Like, you know, I, I started breaking up with myself. Yeah. And I couldn't get it back, bro. Yeah. You know, when you start breaking up, and everything that's getting torn away, you don't get yourself back. Yeah. You can get people back. You don't get your kids back. You don't get you back. You don't get time back. Yeah. I didn't care. I got to the point where I was picking up dirty needles and jamming them and didn't care. I, I didn't have water. I would get alcohol. So I'm shooting, I'm shooting like Jack Daniels whiskey and crack cocaine stacked later on with K4 Dilaudids and just numbing and like getting shit. I was a zombie. Yeah. You know, when people used to joke about that, you know, the zombie apocalypse, that's real. Yeah, yeah. You know, still navigating like homelessness, being in school, taking care of kids across the country, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like right now, people are in, in the US. You know, trying to do something that make you feel like you got your hands tied behind your back. Yeah. I paid for these. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> while I was being pimped out. Yeah. I was dancing in my underwear. In Raleigh, I, I won't forget it. Like I was having dentists, doctors, lawyers, people that are like really connected in the community that is trying to solicit sex, all this stuff. And you never really realize how big things are around you, man. Yeah. It, it really damaged my spirit, but it, it, it started really uh, building, molding me more to see what was important, man. Yeah. You know, I get judged a lot about this, but yeah. I got still here for a reason. Yeah, I feel like I got a purpose. If you wouldn't, if you wouldn't have came up to me, uh, I don't know, honestly, if I would get like a little more uh, the clarity that I kind of wanted to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've lost like everything around me, bro, and uh, she stood by me and, like every bit of that, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm wrong a lot. Of I've burnt bridges. I've, uh, I've understood that I can't build them out of ash. But I've got a terminal illness, bro. I've got stage four liver disease. I want to build people up. Cause yeah. my whole life I've been poor. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Um, dude, you'd be shocked at how many Christians hate me just because I got ink on my body. And I don't yeah. even have as much as on you. And so I, I, I can't even imagine when you said like I feel discouraged when people look at me, they judge me off this. Like I love it because God doesn't. God doesn't see the outside, he looks at the heart. I grew up in the South, I grew up Christians, Christianity is everywhere out there. There's a church on every street corner. I even went to a private Christian school and uh, I was always hearing about Jesus, but it was like the people that were telling me what to do with my life about Christianity and the Bible, they were doing the opposite of what they were telling me. Yeah, yeah, they were hypocrites. Yeah. And so here, I thought, man, if these people are hypocrites, these are the people that are supposed to be the face of God then God must be a total hypocrite. Oh, yeah, lower the bar for him, that's not fair. Yeah, right, it's just totally, they screwed my perception of God, and so I, I actually hated God, hated Christianity, but when I was in school, I was getting all of the Christian awards at school, right. and it wasn't because I was Christian, but it was because I just wanted to get an A or a quiz on the right. Bible test. I, yeah. I wanted to, I was just I was just trying to do what I, what I was told to do in yeah. school, but deep down I hated Christianity. I had this major depression and anxiety going into high school, and you said you could relate to me, like depression and anxiety feels like an incurable disease. And then I started to isolate myself, mm -hmm. and then I became lonely, and I hated myself. I mean, every night I was talking about how much I hated my life, I hated myself, I hated the people around me, and how I wanted to die. I would talk about that. I wanted to take my life, not because I didn't want to be on earth anymore, but it was because I thought it was the only way to get the pain to go away. And so there was a night I was going to take my life, it was on Christmas of 2020. And I went to go have my last meal. And I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus. Not religion, Jesus Christ I had a supernatural encounter with. Right before, a few months before, I had actually looked into all these other religions because like you said, you were like, oh, any sort of faith provides good structure. And that's what I had heard all my life. So I was like, man, if I just believe in something, maybe it'll get me out of this depression pit. So I was looking at Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, New Age, like everything on the planet. 
And when I was looking at these things, like in Islam, for example, you have like the five pillars of Islam, basically. You gotta pray five times a day, give alms to the poor, and the goal is to be a good person. When you die, Allah is gonna weigh your good and your bad. And if you did more good and bad, you're good. But if you did more bad than good, so not that good. Come into like almost like a transaction. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. And then it's like, and then I was like, well, it doesn't say how much is enough. So how do I know if by the time I'm dead, if I did enough? And then, you know, Buddhism and Hinduism, they've got thousands of gods and you're trying to get enlightened and not get bad karma because then you might get reincarnated in something bad. <laughs> and so I was like looking at all these religions and I felt hopeless because I thought I have a hole in my heart. And if I'm a broken human being, you know how wicked this world is and a broken heart. I mean, you were in the midst of wickedness, anything. anything. I couldn't even heal the broken heart with the broken world. So I was like, if I live in a broken world with a broken heart, how could I ever work to perfection? You don't. It seemed impossible and I knew I couldn't do it. So I was ready to take my life that night at Waffle House and I had this supernatural encounter with Jesus. I realized, man, I'm not following religion. I mean, yes, like Christianity is like a labeled religion, but I'm not following structured religion. I'm following Jesus. I'm putting my faith and trust in him. So I had this encounter with Jesus. And when I had this encounter, all these scriptures that I had learned in school, when I was young in church were flashing in my memory, but they were making sense. Yeah, yeah. It was like the 18 inches between my head and my heart were finally connected. And so I start lick, like learning, learning, and listening. So I freak out, I run out of this Waffle House and I get in my car yeah. and I'm like, all right, God, if you're really real, take away my anxiety and depression, because if you're truly real, you can do it. Um, and since that day, four years, I haven't had depression or anxiety. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it seems like it can never go away in a world when you rely on yourself, man. I want to show you a scripture, if you don't mind. I've been using this app called Bible Chat. It's got the Bible on it but it has like devotionals and stuff like that. So you know about Bible chat. That's crazy, bro. Dude, this app is sick. You got the audio Bible. I listen to this when I'm in the gym. And then like, I've been doing like uh, devotionals and stuff on here. Like they got ones about love and stuff like that. And it's super it's sick. It's a good way to connect, man, because some people are scared to have like a, a big Bible. You got it on your phone. Yeah. Come on now. Guys, today's video is actually sponsored by Bible Chat. Bible Chat is a powerful app that supports over 3 million people around the globe in deepening and strengthening their faith. I love Bible Chat personally because it provides instant answers to the Bible where every insight and answer has been carefully reviewed and vetted by theologians, which ensures that every user is going to get a biblically accurate answer. And Bible Chat has many things to offer. It has daily devotionals, community engagement, verse by verse highlight and tracking, the audio Bible, and more. And I've I've personally been using Bible Chat's personalized Bible plans and study tools and their audio Bible. My girlfriend and I have been going through this Bible plan on love. It's super awesome. And every morning when I go to the gym, I listen to Bible Chat's audio Bible because the guy's voice is 10 times more pleasant to listen to than any other audio Bible I've ever heard in my life. If you want to use Bible Chat like 3 million people around the globe, including myself, go to www.thebiblechat.com or visit your Apple Store or Google Play Store to download for free today. So there's two scriptures I want to show you. John 3, there's this passage with Jesus meets with a religious leader at the time. So this was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were all talk with their mouth, but their heart was not it. Jesus was like always butting heads with them because outwardly they were like, I'm so holy, but inside they weren't really. It was just all talk. But Jesus meets with, the, with one of them and his name's Nicodemus. And this is what Jesus says. He says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So a lot of people think that Jesus is condemning them for their lifestyle of, of sin or wickedness or whatever. But it says that Jesus Christ himself came down in the flesh and was fully God in a physical human body. Because you saw, you were in it. There's wickedness in this world. And it's the same way where it's like, if I murdered someone, I deserve jail time, maybe even the death punishment. Because of our sin and wickedness in the world, we deserve death. Because of sin and wickedness in the world, we deserve to be separated from God. God knew that the only way to pay for an imperfect people was to have a perfect sacrifice, one-time payment. So that's why God came down, took on flesh. He was so humble that he lived in our same world with the same temptations, yet he lived a perfect life. That way he wasn't a cosmic dictator telling us how to live our life. He showed us how to live it. Then he died on the cross for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Like when he was on the cross, 
You have to understand, like he was thinking about you, Atrophy, when he was on the cross. If you were the only person alive on the earth, Jesus would have come and died on the cross just for you. The thing that differentiates Jesus from every man is when we die, our body stays in the ground. Yeah. Three days later, Jesus in the flesh rose from the dead. So he defeated death. And that's why it says whoever believes in him. So when you look at Islam and it's how much good you do for Allah or how much enlightenment you can get in Buddhism or Hinduism and hope that you don't get reincarnated in something bad, it's not up to what I can do for God. It's just if I put my faith and trust in Jesus and I always thought, man, I'm too broken for God, so I have to clean myself up before I come to him. But no, Jesus died for the dirtiest, most broken version of Bryce. Oh, yeah, yeah. He died for the most broken version of atrophy. And so... It's pretty dirty. That, <laughs> it's really dirty. Dude, I was so, super dirty too. Yeah. And it's, that's where the humility comes. It's like, God, I need someone other than myself to save me. So then when you go to John 8, just a few chapters later, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then you screw down here. And then he says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So that scripture is what made me realize that my, my depression and anxiety, I could be free from because the truth is Jesus Christ. And in John 14, Jesus makes a bold statement. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whereas like Islam will say, well, Jews and Christians are people of the book. So he, says, yeah. he says, I'm, I'm the only way. And he says, follow me, follow me. Atrophy, like, dude, you've been through some really tough stuff <laughs> and I'll never fully understand what that's like. But there, I, there's a God that loves you, that sees you. Every tear you've cried, he's caught, he's collected every tear. I mean, he's been with you and seeing you everywhere. This is what Jesus thinks about you, man. He doesn't look at the outside, he sees your heart. He loves that you're trying to be good. He's so proud of you. He loves you. You're valuable, not for what you can do for him, but because you're made in his image. He has put his touch on you, atrophy. God loves you. You don't have to wait till you pass away in this lifetime to be valuable. Like God sees you now. He's inviting us into relationship with him. All he says, he's like, just put your faith and trust in me. Like, let's be real. Before, before this, before you got clean, your faith and trust was, was in substances because it was numbing the pain. Your faith and trust was in running away from problems. Your faith and trust was in, in a lot of different things. And everything, lose everything bad, you know. And it, women, just women, just everything. And you even knew that when the when yeah. the feeling of when the when the numbing went away from the drugs, the only way to get that feeling again was to go back to it. And it was like, man, it's I I the never longest did. day of my life, dude. And yeah, <laughs> three bro. years, like three four years, you don't realize, like God, you don't have my teeth in my mouth anymore because of that. You know what I mean? You're yeah. Like, you know I don't. Have, I, I've got kids I had not seen since they were like one yeah. because of like poor decisions yeah. because of substances on yeah. both ends, you know, it's not fair to them. I'm not the best. You've been burdened for a long time, atrophy, and Jesus himself, he says, all those who are heavy burdened and laden, come to me and I will give you rest. The young version of atrophy that was pimped out, that was used and abused, that atrophy, that's the little boy that he says, I love and I'm proud of. And that's the little boy he's looking at today. And the promise of Jesus is he gives us new life. And so where you may not be able to forgive yourself, Jesus says that if we come to him, he will forgive us of our sins and all knowing God will forget all the wickedness that we've done if we come to him and ask for forgiveness. As if you've never done it and you've been given new life. You're no longer identified by your past. You're identified as his son. So where you say, man, this lifetime, I'm trying to be a good person. Bro, I know it gets hard yeah. sometimes. Did you know that Jesus Christ, God himself in the flesh, before he ever did any miracles, before he told anyone about his kingdom, when he was baptized, he comes out of the water and God the Father from heaven goes, that's my son in whom I'm pleased. Before he ever did anything. But you don't have to do anything to get him to be pleased with you. He's already, already pleased with you, bro. He loves you, man.
And how cool is it that on your birthday today, that a cool gift is Jesus reminding you how much he loves you, he sees you, he values you, he's for you. He offers you new life if you come to him. Can I pray for you? Yeah, man. Yeah, let me come around. Jesus, thank you for atrophy, God. We just thank you that you love him, that you've shown up to him right now, God. We just ask that your love may surpass all understanding right now. You're the Prince of Peace, Jesus. Will you just come into his heart right now and just fill him with comfort, God? Let him know that you are here and that you see him. God, I thank you for bringing us together. This is no coincidence, God, that we ran into him, that he's made time to meet together and talk about you. Jesus, I pray that he encourages many others. God, we just bless him. I pray that he feel encouraged today and loved. God, we thank you for his life and his heart. We thank you that you see him, that you restore all things. You make things new in you. We thank you that all wickedness was killed on the cross, God, and that through you we have redemption for sin of the world. We thank you that is, there is redemption for my life and Atrophy's life in you, God. We just bless him. We thank you for your comfort and peace. Bless you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I love you, bro. Love you, bro. God loves you, dude. I want to see you do good, man. I love you, bro. I want to see you do good, bro. I love you, bro. I love you a lot. I believe in you, man. I want everybody to do good. Good, man. I love you, dude. Awesome. Bless you, bro. Wow, guys, how powerful was that? I mean, Atrophy comes in humble, hungry, and just, he, he is so vulnerable. And how cool is that to watch the Lord just come in and start to heal pieces of his heart that haven't been healed yet? Guys, that was amazing. I pray that you guys were encouraged by that. Love you guys. Visit JesusInTheStreet.com for the merch. See you guys next video.